Welcome to Forecasting with Friends, everyone. I hope you're having a good day. You know, it's been a busy one. As you folks probably know, I moved here from working in Orlando at our sister station, Fox 35, and Central Florida just got hit by a major hurricane. Now, Milton is what we've been talking about over the last several days, and it may landfall just south of Tampa, actually at Siesta Key, which is about 70 miles south, so just south, and it brought very heavy rain, very strong winds, and a tornado outbreak. I, I mean, I've covered so many tropical systems living in the state of Florida, and a lot of them, when they come from the Gulf of Mexico, it's that eastern side of the storm, those outer rain bands that can get some twisting in it, and that's usually when we see a lot of tornado warnings. And I was actually live on the air yesterday morning, and I saw one, two, three, and I was like, when these start, they do not stop until landfall happens. And that's really what we saw. There were hundreds, and I'll get to the exact numbers and some stats for you, but uh, it's just so sad because we already know of some deaths from those tornadoes. And it was during the day, so people saw, but you know, you're supposed to be hunkering in place. That's what you do when a tropical system is coming, and especially a major hurricane like Milton. So it's difficult for those folks to get out. So, you know, my heart and prayers just go out to everybody that was impacted by this storm. And it's going to be historic. It was went from tropical storm to cat five very quickly in the Gulf. It made landfall as a category three with 120 mile per hour sustained winds. And I want to take you out to our graphics because guess what? It is still a hurricane category one with 80 mile per hour sustained winds. Pressure has been increasing, which is good. And, uh, you know, we'll get a new track a bit later on today. The good news is this is not going to be impacting any more landmass. Could be seeing some tropical storm force winds in the Bahamas and then the northern Atlantic coast. So we're talking Jacksonville down to Daytona Beach, even down to Cocoa Beach and Palm Bay. Um, I was in Orlando, so some of those coastal zones were part of my viewing area when I worked there. But I want to look at the radar right now. The Orlando Metro and then to the coast of Volusia County still under some flood warnings. Uh, the good news is it does look like any flash flood watches or warnings are uh, no longer because we're just getting a little bit more rain. These are the very outer outer edge of the rain bands and there still could be some strong winds in there, but I will say probably most of the impactful stuff is out in the Atlantic. But take a look at the power outages. This is on an hour loop and they're still continuing to increase in some spots. More than 3.3 million customers are without power. And when I say customers, I mean households. So you don't know how many people live in each household. So, so many folks are without power and it's going to take some time. You know, Florida was really good at putting their linemen in places that they needed to be and there's hundreds of them, but it's still going to take time with the sheer amount of folks that were without power. But here's some of the info about the tornado outbreak. Again, most of, if not all of these tornadoes happened before we even had landfall with Milton. So according to the National Weather Service, 126 at least tornado warnings were issued on Wednesday alone. That is the most for a single day in the Sunshine State on record. And it's actually the second most tornado warnings issued in a single state on a particular day. The only one that would have been more was back in uh, 2011 in the state of Alabama. Now, several tornadoes have been confirmed and all of these little uh, icons that you see, they're red and they have a tornado in them. Those are where we have the potential for a tornado. Now I'm saying several are confirmed because the National Weather Service actually has to go out and survey the damage. So they can say, was this a tornado? Was this a straight line wind? If it's a tornado, uh, what category? Is it an EF zero? Was it an EF two or three? And honestly, by the video of some of these, I think they're gonna be pretty impactful. So we're gonna have more details on what Milton left behind, but I wanna take you guys out to some video and it is truly just astonishing to see. So this is gonna be video of some of the tornadoes that moved onto land. Take a look at this. Take a look how quickly that's moving. That's not just a small funnel cloud. Uh, these are big wedge tornadoes that moved inland. 
Like I mentioned, it was the most ever for a single day in Florida. It included the Everglades to Fort Myers. Mandatory evacuation orders were given to 15 Florida counties with more than 7 million people. And take a look at this map from the National Weather Service. These are all of the warnings that I mentioned. The more than 126. And, you know, this was all, like I mentioned, out ahead of Milton. We saw about just shy of 50 in Miami and around 35 in Central Florida and just shy again of 50 in Tampa Bay. So it's truly just incredible to see. Now, Hurricane Milton destroyed more than 100 homes before it even made landfall. And unfortunately, a lot of those were in mobile home communities for senior citizens. These are pictures out of St. Lucie County on the Atlantic coast. So not even on the coast where Milton made landfall. The sheriff's office said, unfortunately, multiple people have died after that tornado outbreak. And that just breaks my heart to see, you know, they're sheltering in place and it's difficult to get out if a tornado just pops up so quickly. Another one of those tornadoes did cause major damage. This is in Lee County, the sheriff's office showing even more pictures of the destruction from a mobile home community. You can see bricks kind of thrown everywhere, but also a nearby strip mall had decks, fences, and light poles that were just completely tore down. I think it's gonna be this next picture here. There's that strip mall. I mean, just devastating. You can see that it looks like some of the windows were boarded up and obviously the sheriff's office trying to clean up debris before we even saw that landfall. Now, more than 3 million customers without power across the state, like we mentioned, and in St. Petersburg alone, the city actually shut off drinking water at midnight after a water main break. Could you imagine no power and then you have no water? The storm blew apart the roof of Tropicana Field, and that's where the Tampa Bay Rays play. Not clear if anybody was hurt, but first responders were using the ballpark as shelter. I mean, take a look at that. The roof is completely gone. And guess what? It was gone with 102 mile per hour winds when the storm was making landfall. But the thing is, there was a lot of rain even after that. So uh, not good conditions for folks were in there. And like we said, those first responders were sleeping on cots while they waited out the storm. No! Oh my goodness, you just get the chills hearing that. This is in downtown St. Petersburg where a crane collapsed in the high wind, hitting a building under construction. It's the tallest in the city and one of the largest on the Gulf Coast with a height of 115 feet. Thankfully, there were no injuries, but at least six floors were damaged in that construction. Now, people were scrambling last night to find shelter to escape the storm. This video shows several residents packing a school gymnasium in Newport, Florida. Many of them are in temporary shelters for now the second time. All of their pets with them as well. I bet they're so scared and that's following damage just after Hurricane Helene, which was about two weeks ago. So, uh, you know, a lot going on in the area and we're actually going to be bringing in in a moment whenever he's ready. Uh, one of our Fox News correspondents, Connor Hansen and Connor and I actually work together in Orlando and it's actually ironic. Both of our last days in Orlando were on the same day and he went up to work for uh, Fox News and obviously I'm here in uh, Houston. So we've covered a lot of storms together. So we'll, we'll get with him and kind of see kind of the difference. He, he's also been with some storms. So why don't we bring him in? Mr. Connor Hansen. I was just telling the folks, Connor, that we've worked together. Obviously, we are friends. So it's kind of fun that we get to just chit chat about this. And obviously, it's a very serious situation. But can you just walk us through what it was like being through a category three storm at landfall in Tampa Bay? Yeah, Allison, I know Tampa didn't get the immediate brunt of this hurricane, but it was wild seeing this hurricane force wind and rain just flying down these streets of downtown Tampa. You could sort of see the debris left over from these trees and how strong that wind was. Not far from here in St. Pete, got it way worse. We saw those stunning images from Tropicana Field where the Tampa Bay Rays play 
entire sections of the roof were lifted off and we're talking about a building that was designed to withstand hurricanes. A, a construction crane fell, so there's so much damage to clean up here. Uh, people who live in this immediate Tampa area were kind of spared a little bit from what they were expecting to get, but there is just so much damage from the west coast to the east coast and add on top of it allison a tornadoes before this storm yeah. even made landfall oh my goodness and you know i was just telling the folks at home we've covered all these storms together and when we see these systems come in from the gulf of mexico and especially move into the florida peninsula it's that east side that sees those outer rain bands that really pack a punch. Were you outside during any of the outer rain bands or was most of the impact for you in Tampa just at and then after landfall? Well, we saw both. I mean, it, the storm was just so wide. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of the problem and part of the reason that it's been so catastrophic because when this, this hurricane was still about 200 miles offshore from Tampa is when those first tornadoes were being reported in South Florida. So you saw these bands kind of go off and on. You think this hurricane's so far away, but you're having tornadoes destroy homes. So it's just really frightening, um, you know, as you get those initial bands, knowing that the worst of it is still yet to come. And have you talked to any folks that Obviously, you went through Helene, but you were up in Tallahassee, but the folks that were in Tampa, what are they thinking? Just so much fatigue, like we just went through cleaning up from Helene, and then now we have this system two less than three weeks after. Yeah, it's really hard to believe that was <laughs> only two weeks ago, and that's kind of why we're hesitant to uh, say too much about the extent of the damage here, because I'm sure you remember, Allison, it took a while before we really knew how bad things were, especially up in Georgia and North Carolina after Helene came through. But Helene didn't even make landfall in Tampa Bay, but they sort of got the brunt of that too in the storm surge uh, from all that water pushed up from the Gulf. I mean, people lost their homes in the Tampa Bay area due to flooding and they had to move all of their debris, their furniture out to the street. And then there was the mad dash to clean all that up before they turned into projectiles in this most recent storm. So we're still waiting on some reports from those further out areas. Uh, fortunately for the people who live in the immediate Tampa area, they were spared quite a bit from the storm yeah. surge this time. They were worried about getting up to 15 feet, but honestly, some of that water even got sucked out by this system, uh, hitting a lot worse, uh, as I mentioned before, down in Siesta Key and the Bradenton area. So Connor, did you see the reverse surge? Like, did you go look at the bay? Because I bet that is just a bizarre thing to see the water going away when a tropical system is supposed to be coming toward you. Exactly. We haven't been there in person, but just watching some of the videos mm -hmm. and images of that, it is, is so strange to see sort of like a river or a channel being drained. And it's kind of ominous because you wonder when that's going to come surging back. But uh, luckily, no, no, reports, no reports of serious flooding here. Um, St. Pete uh, may have been a bit worse with that storm surge, unfortunately. And uh, Tragically, a uh, couple of deaths have been reported oh. there and across the state now. Yeah, it just breaks my heart. And one last question for you, Connor. We worked and covered Hurricane Ian together and flooding was the big thing there. I know that I saw in Orlando, they already had some rescues going on and we know that that is also happening in St. Pete. You, you know, what are some of the similarities and differences that you see just being on the ground for both of those storms? Yeah, Allison, the first thing that made me think about it was the path of this hurricane is somewhat similar, how it just kind of cut right over Florida, of course, going over central Florida. I think one of the biggest issues with Hurricane Ian was how slow it moved and how long it lingered just dumping rain on central Florida. But that will be a concern, and we might have to wait and see in the coming days how bad that river flooding gets if mm -hmm. that happens again to the same extent. We certainly hope not. but. You know, it sometimes takes days for those water levels to rise and trickle through the watershed. Uh, so certainly hoping that's not uh, an added issue on top of everything people are already dealing with. Because when we think about our former Orlando market that stretches all the way out to the East Coast, I means some of these people had those tornadoes roll through. And then on top of that, they have this hurricane wind and rain to deal with. So just uh, 
a really tough situation for so many people and uh, still waiting for some of the details to trickle yeah. in on, on just how bad it was. Oh, it just breaks my heart. Well, it's so great to talk with you, Connor. So glad you're safe and have safe travels home to New York. Thanks, Allison. Well, just you know, obviously great to hear from Connor, but we've had so many amazing reporters, uh, Fox Weather, Fox News, and even out at some of the our sister stations in Florida, our hearts and prayers go out to everyone. So, you know, we do want to quickly head to break, but we're going to be back because we're going to have a lot more on, you know, what was left behind and then what is to come for us here in Southeast Texas. Welcome back to Forecasting with Friends, everyone. Fox Weather had several meteorologists and reporters across Florida as Hurricane Milton made landfall. And I want you to look at some of the conditions that were felt before, during, and after the storm. But look at the rain just coming down here still and uh, and the debris and the bricks uh, that are on the street, unfortunately, here. Uh, all over the place and you zigzag through the streets of Tampa and you just see debris from uh, vegetation, trees that are down, alarms that are flashing. This seafoam is, um, is pretty crazy. Basically what the seafoam does is it's, it's the water as it begins to interact with, with all of, uh, of the waves and, it, and the oxygen in the air. I mean, I have never seen this much seafoam ever in my life. This sand, guys. Oh my god. Yeah, goodness. watch your this eyes, Michael, because really wind driven We're sand. We're going to try to get down to the beach in our coming hit. Just watch All out right. for your yeah. eyes for safety reasons. Uh, but wow, mm -hmm. Michael giving us a, a front row seat to the strong winds across North Florida. We still have winds that are screaming on the backside of Milton as it peels off and continues to move into the Atlantic Ocean. So the wind core that we're going to find, tropical storm force winds won't end here till most likely 10 or 11 o'clock this evening, or that I should say this morning. Another four hours or so, I'm thinking what we're going to find are strong winds. Uh, as you see right here, uh, look at this. Uh, Lloyd, come with me. We'll just take a look uh, at, at all of this. Uh, one of the older buildings in Tampa uh, that clearly with the winds uh, fell at some point over the night. Uh, and then, Lloyd, take a look up there. We'll show uh, in downtown Tampa some of the alarms that are going off in the building. And obviously a lot of that was filmed a bit earlier on, but the destruction we're going to continue to monitor. Take a look at this Manatee County, south of Tampa, more than 200,000 people without power. Here's a video of a transformer blowing out in the city of Bradenton. The explosions sending sparks flying across neighborhoods. Just incredible to see there. And with the heavy rain and high winds, there are concerns about trees falling across Florida. Now, this is from our sister station, Fox 13 in Tampa, near the station. Huge trees were toppled, sending branches everywhere. And this palm tree was no match for Hurricane Milton as it moved into St. Petersburg. Take a look at that. It just falls over. Uh, a city employee captured this video outside the Moxie Hotel. If you've ever been there, that's usually a street where a lot of folks are walking. So we're so glad no one was injured. And there were mass uh, evacuations across Florida ahead of Hurricane Milton, but not all of them went as planned. Passengers, including this dog here, oh my goodness, had to be rescued from the water just yesterday after their private plane crashed near St. Petersburg. They are all expected to be okay, which is great news, but boy, that is so terrifying. We're so glad everybody is okay. Now, despite all the warnings, a man known as Lieutenant Dan rode out the storm in his boat in Tampa. He got the attention doing the same thing during Hurricane Helene. Lieutenant Dan did make it through again. Reporter Kevin O'Donnell from our sister station and Fox 13 posted this to his Twitter overnight, and he kept saying everyone keeps knocking on my door. I can't get any sleep. And, you know, everybody on social media, you probably heard was saying, is Lieutenant Dan OK? He is. I want to say we do not recommend to do this. To be honest, it's quite silly in my mind to just say that you wrote it out in a boat. That's not safe. Your life is not worth that. Um, glad he is OK. And I know social media is very happy he's OK. His sailboat is about 20 feet long. At first, 
Tampa's mayor said he had gone to a shelter and then apparently had went back. So Lieutenant Dan. Now, Governor Greg Abbott has dispatched the Texas National Guard to help Florida. Military aircrafts like Blackhawks will help with the rescue and recovery efforts. Texas A&M Task Force One rescue swimmers will be on board. We spoke with a rescue specialist currently staged in Georgia. Uh, with our task, our task is to go out and look for people that are missing, people that may be trapped. So one of the things that we do is we're, we're capable of transporting all of our equipment. We don't want to be taxing a system that's already taxed. So we bring this cache of, of equipment right here. It's two 18 wheeler loads of equipment. We're self-sufficient between food, hygiene, uh, and everything that we're going to need. We're going to have to sleep um, and on cots here in the gym. That is so incredible. Glad that they are able to go there and help. Now, if you feel moved to help after back to back hurricanes hitting Florida and beyond Helene and Milton, there's a chance today. The Astros Foundation hosting a hurricane relief drive at Constellation Field in Sugarland from 5 to 8 tonight and then tomorrow at Minute Maid Park from 8 to noon. Now they're looking for everything from phone chargers to cleaning supplies, water, non perishable food items, toiletries. We've got all the details on our website, fox26houston.com. Now that's a great way to help out. You know where everything is going. Um, if you go onto our website, also Sullivan Smart Sense, she actually has other websites if you would rather donate with a credit card, uh, ones that are reputable and that you are not going to get scammed. Well, stick with us. We'll be right back with your forecast here in Southeast Texas after the break. Welcome back, friends. I do want to talk about Southeast Texas. I promise I haven't forgotten about you guys. It's just been a really big deal to talk about this major hurricane making landfall in Florida. But for us, it's all about the sunshine by you have seen it. I've had so many coworkers come up to me and say, Allison, it's so nice out and it is. We're in the low 80s though already, so temperatures are rising. But take a look at the dew point values. 49 relative humidity, 33%. I wish I could say you're welcome. Not up to me, but we've just seen this dry air that's been dominant, just beautiful out. I will say temperatures are going to be rising again today. Alvin likely at about 87 degrees a little bit later on, whereas folks in Harris County could be as high as 90 up to about 93 degrees today. So it is going to be warm once again, and temperatures going to continue to rise over the next several days. We're likely going to be in the mid 90s Sunday into Monday, but take a look at this silver lining that I have for you. Extended forecast. We're talking six to 10 days out through October 20th. Temps actually below seasonal. Reason being a front's going to move through early next week that will drop our highs to the 80s. So what we're experiencing now is where we'll be at peak middle of next week. Wake up temperatures back to the 50s and 60s. We'll see you guys tomorrow.